welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago and this is the Word Feast. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your wonderful, marvelous love for us. Father, we thank you for your great love for us. Father, your words are truth. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your words will never pass away. Father, we pray you teach us your word today. Father, we pray you grant us wisdom, knowledge, understanding and revelation in your word, your will and your love. Father, we pray you grant us ideas, concepts and insights. Father, we pray you show us great and mighty things that we do not know. Father, we pray you show us wonderful things out of your word. Father, we thank you so much for word in due season. Father, we thank you for answers and solutions. And Father, we thank you so much for your mighty hand. Father, we pray you stretch out your hand to heal people, to meet their needs and to do signs and wonders by the name of thy holy child Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your mighty help for us today. Father, you are so good so great and so awesome. Father, we thank you so much you heard and answered our prayers. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. You know, we serve a great God. We serve the El Shaddai, the Most High God. And He is always good. And He is with us. You know, that's a very important thing to believe. God Almighty is with me. Say that with me, you know. In the times that we are passing through at this point of time, um, we should have this faith rooted and grounded in our heart. Right? We should hold fast to this hope and uh, we should hold fast to this thought. The Bible is big about it. No matter what happens in the world, we should remember that the maker of heaven and earth is in us, is with us. And He loves us, He cares for us and He will help us. That thought should always be dominant in your thinking. That thought should be the governing thought of your life. Before we go into our subject today, I want to um, point out a couple of verses to you. Now these verses, you must be very familiar with them. But, you know, the word of God is alive. And the word of God is not just mere knowledge. The word of God will sustain us. The word of God will help us. And when you trust God based on his word, he will manifest himself in our life. His goodness will manifest in our life. His love will manifest in our life. That's how you receive his love. So the Bible says in 1 John, chapter 4 and verse 4 you are of god little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world so no matter what is happening in the world no matter how things are shaping up in the world right we are to remember that our god is greater than all that See, our El Shaddai is greater than coronavirus. Our El Shaddai is greater than the devil. Our El Shaddai is greater than uh, the economic situations, the lockdowns and the difficulties in jobs. El Shaddai is greater than all. Jesus said this, my father is greater than all. All. All means nothing excluded. <laughs> Everything included, right? Everything. The devil, the curse, the death, the sickness, the disease, the poverty, the lack, the debt, and all the pressures and all the depressions, all the stress. You know, our God is greater than all. Say that with me. All. Not some, but all. That thought should be re deeply rooted in you. Right? Hold fast to that. The greater one is in me. The greater one will help me. The greater, greater one will strengthen me. The greater one will uphold me. There is a verse that, that has been helping me all these years. You know, I pray this verse one way or the other every single day. Every single day I use this verse. And it has been, uh, you know, one of those verses that you live by. Um, for me, th th this, this is, <laughs> you know, one of those verses that I go to all the time. All the time. Isaiah 41. 
and verse 10. Isaiah 41 verse 10. The Bible says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Why shouldn't we fear? You know, if you fear, if you tell somebody, don't fear, there has to be a reason for that. You can't just say, don't fear. Right? Otherwise, it, it would end up being a cliche. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, he, he's, he's trying to encourage me. Okay, but what does he really know about my situation? Right? That's how we react. But God is giving you a reason why you shouldn't fear. God is saying, fear not, for I am with thee. I am with thee, the maker of heaven and earth, the almighty, the most high, the greater than all is with thee. See, that's why you don't need to fear. Do you see this? Right? Now, God is saying, be not dismayed. Now, when, when you keep look at all the various things that are happening in the world, you are tempted to be dismayed. You are thinking, what's happening here? What's going to happen? What's the future? How is this all going to turn out? Is, is there any good in the future at all? Or is it all going to be doom and gloom and depression and, and frustration and uh, lack and death and disease. Is this, is this the future? Now you have a question, isn't it? Right? It's coming up in your heart. It's, it's all around you. People are asking this. People are talking about this. What's the answer? God is saying, do not be dismayed. Why? I'm your God. See, that makes all the difference. Who is your God? If, you're, if your God is an inanimate object, then you are in trouble. Right? But if your God is the living God, the maker of heaven and earth, hey, now you are all right. Because our God is well able to deliver us. Our God is well able to help us. Our God is well able to prosper us and propel us forward and cause us to progress even in the midst of this situation. Do you understand this? Yeah? That, that makes all the difference. You know? Why? Who is with you? Right? Who is with you? That's a very important question to, to answer. And if you just have mere human beings with you, you, know, you may survive for a certain amount of time, but after that they can't do much. No matter who you know and how powerful they are and how much wealth they have or how skillful they are, Right? Even doctors, you know, they can only do so much. Now, we thank God for doctors, you know. They are doing a lot of good. But even doctors can do only so much good. After that, they will say, no, that, 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 that's all we can do. We have done our best. Why? They are human beings. They have limitations. Right? So, who is with you? That's a very important question that you need to know the answer for. Hmm? Say this with me. El Shaddai, the maker of heaven and earth, the almighty God is with me. Almighty God is for me. I will not fear. I will not be dismayed. Eh? Say this often. These are the kind of scriptures that you should be going to over and over again. Right? Read them, think about them, ponder them, put them in your mouth, speak about them, discuss them. Right? Don't keep discussing what you see in the news and what you read in the newspaper. Right? They can only report facts, what is happening. And sometimes they lie. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, you, you know, if, if, if that's all you have in your mouth, if that's all, if, if that is the only thing that you converse with others, right? Hey, you are in trouble. Hmm? Instead, go to the Almighty God's word. Go to the eternal truth. This word can change what's happening on the outside. This word can sustain you. You know, God is sustaining all of his creation. The entire universe with his word. And if you will put this word in your mouth. And if you will put it in your thought. If you will put it in your mind and you talk about that. That word will uphold you. That word will create, will change those situations. It will change the situations that are not good. It will create good things in your life. Do you understand this? God's word is all powerful. God's word will overcome anything. 
So put God's word in your mouth. God, let God's word become your thought. Let God's word become your conversation. Let God's word become your confession. Do you understand this? Yeah? So, look at this. I will strengthen thee. Yeah, I will help thee. Yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Now, that's a good reason not to fear. Right? Why? Almighty God has promised me that he will be with me. He will help me, he will strengthen me and he will uphold me with the right hand of his righteousness. And when I have his word, I don't need to fear. I'm not going to be dismayed because God does not lie. God does not change his word. I want you to look at a couple of verses before we move into our subject today. Go with me to Numbers chapter 23. You know, this is a beautiful, beautiful passage. These are the kind of verses that you should be reading and dwelling on. Verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? Hmm? See, God is not like a man. See, no matter who it is, if it is a man, he is likely to change. Right? Whether he is great or whether he is normal, ordinary, right? Man can change. Man can change his mind and man can lie. <laughs> right? We know all about that. Right? We, we know people who have lied to us. We know people who have changed their mind. Right? Uh, our neighbors have, we, we, you know, our neighbors have done this to us. Family members have done this. And, uh, you know, people in the society, people in your workplace, right? Politicians have done this. Right? All sorts of people do this all the time. They change their mind. They lie. And many times when we read the Bible or when we hear something that God has spoken, we, try, we kind of, you know, put God in the same basket as, as these men who have lied to us and who have changed their mind. But God is not a man that he should lie. Not the son of man that he should change his mind. When he says something, he will do it. When he says something, he will make it good. That's our God. Our God does not go back on his word. Go with me to Psalm 89 and uh, let's read verse 34. My covenant I will not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Right? If God has said something, he will do it. He will not break it. He will not alter it. What God said will happen. God will do according to his word. God will not change his mind. God will not alter it. God will not say, okay, I, I know I said that at that time, but you know, today's circumstances are different. We have a pandemic, so, you know, my word, what I said at that time, it's not good for today. What I said at that time won't work today. You know, God is never going to say that. Why? God supersedes all these things. He is almighty. He is the glorious God. He is the God of glory. He is the almighty God. He is the king of glory. And what God said yesterday... What God said in the past is still good today. No matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstances, what God said is always true. Irrespective of the circumstance, irrespective of the situation, irrespective of a government, what God says holds good all the time, every time, forever. God's word is eternal. God's word will endure forever. Did you get that today? Yeah? It's so important that you hold fast to God. How do you hold fast to God? By holding fast to His word. You cannot really hold on to God and have hope in God and have faith in God apart from His word. That's the only way through which you can hold fast to God. Right? Go over the word of God over and over again. You know, the Holy Spirit has quickened a word of, uh, uh, the word of God to me, a particular passage. And that's what we are going to talk about today. And we are going to hold fast to that word. That he has given us through this time. Right? And God will do awesome things through his word. Do you understand that? You know, God has been doing this in my life for a, for a very long time. Right? God will give me a passage. He will quicken the word of God. He will give me a word in due season. And, I, and when I hold fast to that, he, he will carry me through. He will carry me through that situation. He will help me. Right? He will help me and he will sustain me and he will do awesome things. 
and he has always been faithful he has been doing it over and over and over and over again right and he will do it now also and that's what we are going to look at so this message that we are do, um, you know, we are going to speak about today is not the parable of the sower we are going to take a short break from that today we are going to talk about the lord is my shepherd the el shaddai is my shepherd that's what we are going to talk about right go with me to psalm 23 you know a, a few days later actually in the previous recording Uh, the last time that we were recording messages you know the holy ghost was quickening a particular passage this passage in me and i spoke about it that the, the introduction briefly and uh, after i spoke about that and then uh, the holy ghost kept bringing that up to me and um, you know as i went to preach in church services the holy ghost kept bringing the same thing over and over again and uh, even today i was thinking to continue the parable of the sower study you know that's a very important study but um, the holy ghost you know uh, redirected me and said you speak about this now right and that's what we are going to talk about el shaddai the almighty god the lord is my shepherd and that's what we are going to study about today so go with me to psalm 23 and this is david speaking right let's read a couple of verses and then we will meditate on that verse 1 the lord is my shepherd i shall not want or i shall not lack he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters he restores my soul he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake and i want you to take hold of verse 4 yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil no evil no matter what it is i will not fear why for thou art with me see that's always the reason the maker of heaven and earth god almighty is with me and therefore i will fear no evil your rod and your staff they comfort me right thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup runs over my cup overflows with blessings one translation translate translates it like that my cup overflows with blessings let's read that last verse also surely not maybe not might be not if the conditions are favorable now he said surely this word holds true all the time every time every time in any season in any circumstance right this is the eternal word of the almighty god and god said surely say that with me surely surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all not some of the days right not the economic boom days right not when everything is going well days right all the days whether it is pandemic days or lockdown days or whatever day it is all the days all the days of my life why because the world changes you know the world is temporal it is subject to change the world might change but my god does not change i serve the almighty god who never changes and the almighty god is my shepherd and therefore goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life every day of my life now you need to hold fast to that word right this psalm 23 is the word from god for you for this season right i'm saying this by the holy spirit psalm 23 psalm 95 i want you to take hold of that just just hold fast to it read it every day right go over it pray about it ask god to speak to you through that ask god to teach you ask god to strengthen you hold fast to it i'm doing this i'm reading this for myself reading it over and over again and god is speaking me to, speaking to me through that right i am teaching it in churches i'm teaching it in my for to my family right i'm doing this over and over again why because god has given this word for us 
this is the word for you for this season take hold of it psalm 23 psalm 95 i want you to write that down go over it repeatedly read it every day read it several times a day pray to god based on that claim it for you in the name of jesus right and we are going to study that we are going to ponder about it we are going to meditate upon it and god is going to do awesome things for us god is going to do mighty things for us Eh? Don't, don't look at what is happening on the outside and think, oh, oh, what's going to happen? No, we serve the Almighty God. The Almighty God is my shepherd. Eh? So I, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to thrive. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to expand. I want you to say this with me. You know, this is the word the Holy Ghost gave us at the beginning of this year. Right? And we are going to confess it right now. Say this with me. In the name of Jesus, 2021, will be a year of expansion multiplication and progress for me now that that's not based on circumstances because it's not the word of man that's that that was given to us by the holy spirit what god said is true what god said will change the circumstances what god said will override circumstances god will fulfill what he has said You know, every year God gives me a word for that year and every year he has been faithfully fulfilling it and he will do it this year also do you understand this yeah in fact he has told me that this entire decade will be a decade of expansion for us and if you are a part of this ministry th- this entire decade will be a decade of expansion for you take that for yourself in the name of Jesus say that with me in the name of jesus this decade will be a decade of expansion for me you know we, we, if i say that b- because i'm so smart that's that would be a problem right if i have problems uh, you know that that's more than me too strong for me then i'm done right but see i'm not saying that because i'm so smart i'm saying that because god told me that <laughs> and what god told me he will do yeah do you understand that clear on this hallelujah Hallelujah to Jesus glory be to Jesus glory be to Jesus the Lord Jesus is going to do awesome things for us be of good cheer be of good cheer god is about to show up and give you a new beginning that is another word the holy ghost has given me right just just this week you know we were in our family bible study and we were praying and we were seeking god and the holy ghost said new beginnings i am say new beginnings in the name of jesus new beginnings for me right new beginnings hallelujah to jesus god is going to do new things for you say new things new things right new things and we are going to talk about these things hallelujah to jesus glory be to god okay ho- you know who let's first of all look at who spoke this eh? david is speaking david is saying the lord is my shepherd now you know david he didn't have the entire bible like we have he had the first five books of uh, the bible what we call the pentateuch right or what the bible calls the law and um, so that's what he had and and the words of the prophets and he he is looking at that he is he is looking at the life of abraham he is looking at the life of isaac he is looking at what god did for jacob he looks at what god did for joseph he is looking at what god did for israel right how god led them how god provided for them how god protected them and he is reading all that he is meditating on all that he is thinking about this and then this dawns on him hey God is functioning as a shepherd for them. Now he's a shepherd boy. He understands the job of a shepherd. He knows exactly what a shepherd does, right? And as he is looking at the life of Jacob, he is looking at the life of Abraham, he is looking at the life of Isaac and Joseph and Israel and he looks at them and and he is thinking, hey, hey, "Excuse me. This is the job of a shepherd. God is being a shepherd to them." God is leading them God is guiding them God is providing for them right God God is meeting their needs God is giving them food to eat God is giving them water to drink God is fighting against their adversaries God is protecting them God is causing goodness and mercy to come to them 
this is exactly what the shepherd does. Right? And then he says, The Lord, the El Shaddai, the maker of heaven and earth is my shepherd. Right? That's so important. You know, if you say the Lord is a shepherd, that won't help you that much. Right? You have to say the Lord is my shepherd. If, if David, all that he did was just look at the life of Abraham and Israel and Jacob and Joseph and Isaac and say, look how God helped them. Look at how God did miracles for them, how God blessed them. You know, God was so good to them, man. If that's all David said, and we wouldn't be reading this, sh- this psalm at all. No, David saw something else. Hey, I have the same covenant that Abraham had with God. I have a blood covenant, blood covenant with God Almighty. Right? The God of Abraham is my God. Right? And what God did for Abraham, he's going to do for me. What God did for Israel, he's going to do for me. Right? And then he said boldly, the Lord is my shepherd. Hmm? That, that, that personal belief, a personal relationship and receiving God's goodness and God's promises for yourself is so very important. If you have a generic faith, that won't bless you that much. You've got to make it personal. And when you make it personal, God's goodness will flow into your life. God's love will manifest in your life. That's what, that's what David is doing here. He's saying the Lord is my shepherd. My shepherd. Eh? And that's when God's mighty hand will manifest itself in your life. God will lead you and guide you like a shepherd. God will help you. You know, one of those verses that I like in the Bible, go with me to Exodus, the last chapter. And in Exodus, you will see a great example of how God functioned as a shepherd for Israel. And um, I think it is chapter 40. It is chapter 40. Now, let's read from verse um, 35. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Now notice from verse 36. When the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward in all their journeys. See, the, the, the glory cloud rested upon the tabernacle. It is there all the time. They could see it physically, right? That, that's the presence of God. The Shekinah presence of God is right there. Right? So the Israeli people could look at that. Right? Physically. Okay, God is there. Right? And when the glory cloud lifted up, they say, Oh, okay, God is on the move. Our shepherd is moving forward. Let's follow the shepherd. Right? And they're saying, when, when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud were not taken up, then they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, and fire was on it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. If you look at the sheep, right, the sheep don't do anything for themselves, right? You know, a lion will go to, to the forest and it, it will hunt. It's food, right? It will go hunting, it will find its prey, it will find its own food. That's what a lion does. An eagle will do that. An eagle will go hunting for its food, right? It will find a prey, it will catch a prey, it will eat it. That's how an eagle is made. Even a deer, right? Uh, it will go looking for the grass. It will, it will go look for the pasture. And it will try and get its own food, right? See, the God did not call us my lions. Right? He didn't call us my gaz- gazelles, right? No, he didn't call us my eagles. No, he called us my sheep. See, the sheep does not go hunting. It cannot hunt. Hmm? The sheep never goes looking for pasture. The sheep never goes looking for water. The sheep cannot defend itself. You know, if a wolf or, or an, a lion or a bear comes you know, to take away the sheep, it cannot defend itself. It cannot fight. At the most, it will try to hide or run and it cannot run that well either. 
right? Have you sheep? Have you seen a sheep running, <laughs> right, against a lion, <laughs> right? Far from a lion, I should say. Yeah, no, no, that's not something that it could win. Hmm? It's it's not going to run fast enough. The the sheep is 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 basically a helpless animal, right? It cannot do anything by itself. You know, man was not created to live by himself. Man was created as as a being who is supposed to live in dependence on God. Man is never supposed to do anything by himself. He is supposed to live in dependence on God. Right? He is supposed to be dependent on God. On God. He is not an independent being. And you can see the life of people who want to live independent of God. It's a sad story. Right? God wants us to look to Him. God wants us to live by His grace, by His blessing, by His strength. We were never created to live as independent beings. Right? Anytime people try to do that, that's why life is a struggle for them. That, that's why life is like a fight. Like, like the, you know, some people feel that as if they are going to war. Just trying to live their daily life. Right? But when you lean on God, you can rest. When you lean on your good shepherd, when you look to your maker, when you look to your creator, you can live life in ease. I'm not saying you will never have a trouble. But I am saying that when you live by the grace and the strength, there will be a ease to your life. You know, that's what our Lord Jesus said. Go with me to Matthew chapter 11. Right? Verse 28. Come unto me. <laughs> Notice what is the Lord Jesus saying? He's saying, Come to me. Why? All you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Hmm? Say, Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. You know, some people are overloaded, they are stressed out, their mind is about to burst. And they, they, they are having trouble all the time. Right? They are not able to face the life situations. They are scared. They are lonely. They are, they, they are, they are depressed. Right? They, they, they don't have the strength to you know, face the things that, they are, we, that we are facing today. Right? They don't have any hope. If you are in that situation, you come to the Good Shepherd. He will give rest to your soul. He will restore your soul. He will refresh your soul. He will give you hope. He will give you strength. He will provide for you. He will make your life good. He will cause goodness and mercy to follow you. Do you understand that? Come to the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd is, 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 is giving you an open invitation. He's saying, come to me. Right? Don't, don't, don't try to handle things by yourself. If you're doing that, then you're going to struggle. It's going to be a heavy load. It's going to be beyond your strength. We are living in the last days. And what is happening now, right? It's not the end. It's just the beginning of the sorrows. Right? And if you want to continue in this world, right? Live a successful life. You got to lean on your shepherd. You got to lean on your maker. And when you lean on your maker, grace will be ministered to you. Goodness and mercy will be ministered to you. You wake up and you wake up to the mercies of God. Jeremiah said, said it like this, Your mercies are new every morning. Your mercies are new every morning. When you lean on the shepherd, new mercies will be given to you. When you get up, you are not getting up thinking, Oh boy, another day, what am I going to do? How am I going to face this life? I don't know, no. When you are leaning on the Mecca, you wake up and you are waking up to new mercies. God has sent you a package. New mercies for today. Hmm? God has sent you a delivery. Right? To your address, to your house, to your life. New mercies. Hmm? Jeremiah says this beautifully. Go with me to Lamentations. 
<laughs> you know, Lamentations is a good book. Jeremiah is talking about all that, uh, all the trouble that people are facing, you know, in the Israel, in Israel, because of their sin and because of the judgment uh, as a result. And in the midst of that, he says some very good things. Right? <laughs> Notice, <laughs> verse twenty-two. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, Be- because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. And then he said, great is your faithfulness. You know, God is a faithful God. What does faithful mean? Me, faithful means you can trust him. Right? He's going to be there for you all the time. Every time, any day, any hour, every day, 365 days a year. Right? As long as you are alive, God is going to be with you. Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You can trust God. He is not an absentee father. He, he is not somebody who is going to abscond from you. He is not going to somebody who is going to run away from you. No, God is going to be with you all the time. Hmm? You know, people, so some of the people whom I know, some, some people who are very near and dear to me, they were there in 2020 beginning. They are not there today. Good people. Right? But, you know, but God is not like that. God will be there today. God will be there tomorrow. God will be there forever. God is faithful. And when you lean on God, his, he is he, going to send you his mercies to you every day. You get up in the morning, his grace, his mercies, his goodness is going to meet you. It's waiting for you, ready. The strength that you need for that day is going to be ready. The grace, the goodness, the mercy is ready for you, for that day, for that, for that season. Hmm? And because of God's grace and because of God's mercies, we will not be consumed. Nothing in this universe has the power to overcome what God supplies to us. Right? God's mercy and God's grace is greater than any pestilence on the outside. It's greater than any economic problem on the outside. God's mercies and God's grace is greater. 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 Always. Any day. Hmm? And... Uh, uh, Jeremiah, you know, he, he lived through a horrible time, right? He lived through a period of judgment when the judgment of God was coming upon Israel back to back, back to back, back to back, right? And he lived through the, uh, the you know, the siege that Nebuchadnezzar, you know, brought against uh, Jerusalem, right? And the famine as a result of that and the lack during those times, right? And, and the war and the casualties and all that. And in the midst of that, Jeremiah is saying this. Eh? What is he saying? It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. You know, what came against Jeremiah and the people of Israel could have wiped them out totally, completely. Right? But it did not. Why? Because of the Lord's mercies. Same mercies. Hmm? It is because of God's grace. Look at this verse uh, 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassion fails not. It will never fail. God is compassionate forever. God always loves you. God is always merciful to you. God's grace will always sustain you. Did you get that today? Yeah? Look at verse 23. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. In verse 24 he says, The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. I'm going to put my hope in God. Right? You, you want your sanity to be in place? <laughs> put your hope in God. You know, this, this, this situation and the things that are happening in the world can, can, cause, can cause you to <laughs> lose your sanity. Hmm? It can cause you to be hopeless, depressed. Eh? You may feel like, what, what's the point, man? What, what, what's the point of facing all this, going through all this? And uh, why should I keep fighting? Well, why should I strive to move forward? What, what's the point? You know, you, you can become hopeless if you're just natural-minded. No, but when you include God in your life, 
when you put your faith in god when you understand how faithful god is and how merciful and how gracious god is now you have hope now you have a reason to get up in the morning now you know that hey i have a good life i have a good future my good shepherd came that i might have life and i have uh, that i might have life more abundantly hmm that's why my good shepherd came and because he has come i have hope i have hope i will do well I, i'm going to thrive I, I, i'm going to move forward in this time i'm going to expand i'm going to multiply but not not because i'm so great but because i have a good shepherd and my good shepherd is el shaddai the almighty god the almighty god hallelujah to jesus hallelujah to jesus glory be to god blessed be his holy name hallelujah to jesus mighty jesus hmm? jesus is our good shepherd let's go to john chapter 10 hallelujah to jesus in john chapter 10 let's look at verse um, 10 and 11 the thief talking about the devil comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy i am come eh see if god said okay there is devil in the world man that does not give you hope <laughs> and the devil is coming <laughs> to steal to kill to destroy and to devour right that that does not that's not a good report that doesn't give you any hope right that doesn't give you any hope at all but jesus did not stop there what did jesus say i'm come i'm come i'm come for this reason i'm come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly and then jesus said this i am the good shepherd the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep our good shepherd is so good that he laid down his life for us you know the devil had taken us captive us as the entire human kind because through sin right and there was no way for man to get out there was absolutely no way for man to get out man could not redeem himself man could not provide for his redemption man could not do anything that could buy our way out no amount of good deeds no amount of uh, you know uh, being right or whatever right man simply cannot purchase his way out of that bondage you know the good shepherd came he paid the price and he redeemed us he brought us out he brought us out right you should remember that if our lord jesus laid down his life for us right so that we can be redeemed how much more will he take care of you in in, in your natural things hmm how much more paul says this very precisely we will close with this romans chapter 8 romans chapter 8 and we are going to read from verse um, 31 what shall we then say to these things if god be for us who can be against us when god is for us who can be against us really right what what can the pandemic do what can a lockdown do what what, what can economic trouble uh, do what can it do if god the maker of heaven and earth who created everything who opened the windows of heaven and poured out manna for his people hmm? who who made water flow like river in a desert who opened a rock and caused water to flow from a rock see there is one major difference between our good shepherd the el shaddai god almighty and an ordinary human shepherd see man can only give what is there if there is good pasture a shepherd can lead his sheep to the pasture if there is uh, water available then the human shepherd can lead us to the water right can lead his sheep to the water he can provide only what is there but if it is not there a human shepherd really cannot do anything right he is going to look at his sheep and say oops i tried my best i searched everywhere i couldn't find grass i couldn't find a good pasture for you i searched everywhere but i couldn't find water for you it's simply not there right because he is human he is limited see but when our god almighty right 
if it is if something is not there he can make it he can create it see when they when god was leading the children of israel through the wilderness there was no way for them to get food you see first of all they were they were traveling right they are not settling down in that place if you are going to settle down then you can do some irrigation dig a well and all that stuff right but they were traveling on top of it they were traveling through a wilderness in the wilderness you can't really you know bring water for uh, uh, 30 lakh people <laughs> right there were anywhere between 2 to 3 million people there right and they had many beasts how are you going to get water in the wilderness for such a, you know, for, for such a huge amount of people and beasts right there was no water you know what god did god brought water out of a rock rocks don't give water but god made rock to give water see we serve el shaddai our shepherd is not a human our shepherd is not a, a man our family or are uh, are the chief minister or the prime minister or are some other human see our shepherd is god almighty and if something is not there he will create it for you see there is no way to get food to such huge amount of people right day in day out day in day out hmm how are you going to bring food for 3 30 lakh people every day do you know the cost that is involved the logistics that is involved how, how are you going to do that right humanly it's not possible a human shepherd can never accomplish that but you know what god did he simply opened the windows of heaven and gave his people the food of angels you know god will do that for you right see we serve el shaddai el shaddai the lord almighty is our good shepherd and we will not lack you do not need to fear you do not need to be dismayed your life is not coming to a close it's not going to come to an end or or a dreaded future no you have a good life god almighty is with you god will prosper you god will increase you god will meet your needs god will provide for you and god is going to give you new beginnings god is going to do awesome things for you Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Did you get that today? I'm going to pray for you. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise you Father. Praise you Jesus. Father we come to you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Father you are our shepherd. El Shaddai the Almighty. The maker of heaven and earth is our shepherd. And we say we will not lack. Father you are able to provide for us. You are able to meet our needs. You are able to prosper us. We are not just going to you know, survive this time. Father we are going to thrive. We are going to increase. And we are going to multiply. And we are going to have a good life. And Father you are able to do that. You are well able to do that. And Father we thank you for meeting the needs of the people. Father we thank you for giving increase and multiplication for these people. Say this with me. In the name of Jesus I will increase. I will move forward. I will progress. And this year will be a year of expansion for me. And Father we thank you so much for doing exactly what you have promised us. Father we praise you, we worship you, we adore you. Father we pray that you grant new beginnings for these people. New beginnings Father for, for the people who are listening to my voice. Father let there be new beginnings in their life. And Father we thank you Father. We praise you Father. We worship you, we adore you. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. Blessed be your holy name. Father we want to pray for people who are sick. Those of you who are sick lay your hands on your body. I'm going to pray for you right now. Father we thank you so much our Lord Jesus took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses Father we thank you so much our Lord Jesus shed his precious and holy blood for us Father we thank you our Lord Jesus surely bore our diseases and carried our pains and Father we have been healed by the stripes of the Lord Jesus by the authority of your word in the name of Jesus be 
healed in the name of jesus sickness and disease leave their bodies in the name of jesus let the healing power of god flow in their bodies in the name of jesus damaged organs be replaced in the name of jesus let the life of god permeate into your bodies in the name of jesus let strength from god almighty fill your body hallelujah to jesus glory be to god blessed be his holy name hallelujah to jesus in the name of jesus cancer die be destroyed in the name of jesus liver problems be healed in the name of jesus livers be restored hallelujah to jesus glory be to god hallelujah to jesus ebrona lang greshkala na nebrun andrer tro ebrun nand ne in the name of jesus blind eyes be opened ya brona la kroshkale ne bruna landra ne prosholond ne ne krola bene hallelujah to jesus glory be to god blessed be his holy name you know you have received your healing today and let us know how god has done mighty things for you and we will praise god along with you we will worship god along with you hallelujah to jesus now please do subscribe uh, to our channel and uh, let us um, you know and click on the notification bell and uh, you know that will enable you to receive uh, our videos you know as soon as we publish it it will help you uh, listen to our daily audio messages it will be a great blessing to you it it will help you it will help you hallelujah to jesus and uh, you need all the strength that you can get all the grace that you can get these days right and uh, please do send us your uh, prayer requests to our whatsapp number or our email address you will see it on the screen and we will believe god along with you god will do awesome things for you and those of you who want to send offerings to this ministry or become a partner in this ministry please visit our website it is gwfindia.in you will again see that in the um, in the screen and uh, click on the donate tab and there are different ways you can choose whatever is comfortable for you and you can be a blessing to this ministry god will bless you a hundredfold thank you so much for listening god bless you jesus is coming soon